Action Commission on this Monday, July 24th at 5.39. Once again, welcome everyone. And I just want to uh, remind everyone that this meeting is being recorded. Um, so um, please be advised of that. And um, we're going to be taking things just a little bit out of order uh, this evening. We're going to be starting with our action items uh, first. Um, and our first action item uh, is open meeting law complaint, uh, Karen Bartholomew, 30 Point Pleasant Road, meeting minutes processing, acknowledgement of complaint, and authorizing a response. So we need to, um, everyone should have received the complaint uh, from Dawn, our staff, and we just need to acknowledge uh, the complaint and uh, vote to allow the department head and Morgan um, to send a response to the AG's office. So does anyone have any discussion? Otherwise, we'll need a motion to accept the complaint and issue a um, issue a response. That's right. I motion we accept the complaint and start the response. Okay. So, um, Commissioner Jewell, with a motion to accept the complaint and issue a response, do we have a second on that, please? I'll second. You want Josh Strauss? <laughs> mm. <laughs> That's okay. All right. So, second from Pam, uh, Commissioner Pam Sharon. And I'm going to do a roll call, please. Uh, Commissioner Jewell? Yes. Commissioner Sharon? Yes. Commissioner. Parent? Yes. And Commissioner Wigglesworth is a yes. Um, All right. Are we going to ask any questions? I'm, I'm sorry? Are we going to ask any questions to Ann about this? Oh. Okay. Well, well, is no, that Ann's it? Ann's all set. No, Ann's oh, okay. all set. She just wanted to do it for it in case any questions came up. Okay. Um, all right. So next up, we've got a cease and desist 21 Wakefield Ave. This is Henry Ellis and Nicole uh, Zudema. Uh, working within the 100 foot buffer zone uh, and a perennial stream without a valid permit. Do we have a representative for 21 Wakefield Ave? No. Nope. Mr. Chairman, we sure. do not have a representative for them. Um, I heard from Mr. Ellis and he is detained at his position. Um, he asked to be continued to August 21st. At that time, he should have his RDA submitted prior to to open up. Okay, so we're waiting for an RDA on this. So can we get a motion of continuance on this item to uh, August 21st, please? I'll make a motion that we continue this to August 21st. Commissioner Parent with the first. Do we have a second? I'll second. Commissioner Sharon with the second and a roll call. Commissioner Jewell? Yes. Commissioner Sharon? Yes. Commissioner Parent? Yes. Commissioner Wigglesworth is a yes. All right, next up, uh, it's an item that is uh, continued, so it's discussion of the wetland restoration work uh, at old uh, at 4 uh, Old Douglas Road. This is the LKQ site, so I just need a motion to continue this to 821, please. I'll make a motion to continue to 821. Commissioner Sharon with the first, and do we have a second? I'll second. Commissioner Parent with the second and a roll call. Commissioner Jewell? Yes. Commissioner Sharon? Yes. Commissioner Parent? Yes. Commissioner Wigglesworth is a yes. And um, the next one here is a request for certificate of compliance for 47 Colonial Road. This is the Chenette property. Uh, there has been a request from Mr. Kravosky for a continuance on that. So can we get a motion of continuance, please? A motion to continue. <coughs> a motion of continuance for 47 Colonial Road. Okay, Commissioner Jewell with the first. And do we have a second? I'll second. Commissioner Sharon with the second on that for 47 Colonial Road. And a roll call, Commissioner Jewell? Yes. Commissioner Sharon? Yes. Commissioner Parent? Yes. Commissioner Wigglesworth is a yes. Commissioners, um, please make sure your microphones are on and next to your, uh, your mouth, please, so everyone can hear it. Um, all Mr. Right. Chairman, so next request for certificate of compliance for 19 Cedar Point Road. Uh, this is the Pocket project. Mr. Chairman, can so what date was 47 Colonial continued? To 821. To 821, 821 as well. Yep. Okay. 
Thank you. All right. Um, and do we have a um, do we have a representative for 19 Cedar Point Road here? I believe Robin was only planning on coming around 6, 630. Okay, we can table this one until the end of the meeting. Um, all right, so moving on to um, old business items, the beginning of the agenda. All right, so the first one is the violation, the ongoing violation at Zero Goddard Street. Matt Morrow has been in touch with us and he would like a continuance on that. Can we get a motion of continuance for Zero Goddard Street to 821, please? I'll make a motion that we continue Zero Goddard. All right. Commissioner Parent with the first. Do we have a second? I'll second. Commissioner Sharon with the second. And a roll call. Commissioner Jewell? Yes. Commissioner Sharon? Yes. Commissioner Parent? Yes. Commissioner Wigglesworth is a yes. Next item is the enforcement order for 90B Sutton Road. Uh, this is Mr. Corville working uh, in several uh, resource areas without a valid permit. I think Don's got an update on that just real quick. That is correct. Um, so they asked for a continuance to um, either 87 or 821. They hired Stephen Riberty, the lead biologist from Goddard Consulting, and they're also working with Allen Engineering um, to get all of their filings in proper order and see what options they may have for building. Okay. Great, so they've, uh, he's got staff and we know who they are. So with that, can we get a motion of continuance for the enforcement order for 90B Sutton Road, Jack Corville's property? To 821, please. I motion we continue uh, 90B Sutton Road, uh, what date? To 821. 821. All right, so we have Commissioner Jewell with the first, we have a second. Second. Commissioner Sharon with the second and a roll call. Commissioner Jewell? Yes. Commissioner Sharon? Yes. Commissioner Parent? Yes. Commissioner Wigglesworth is a yes. Uh, next item is uh, has had a request for a continuance as well. 67 uh, Colonial Road. This is the Arnold uh, violation. So with that, can I get a motion to 821 for um, the enforcement order on 67 Colonial Road? Can I ask a question? What are they doing? What, this can, what are they, because they were they're, up in there. It's, um, it's their staff that is trying to work out something with it. So they've asked for a continuance. So just need to continue it. Have they been? So do we have a first? Have they been in contact with Don? Um, they have been in contact with Don. Okay. You want to speak on that? I, so um, the email that I received from Stephen Poole, who is the engineer, he says that, um, that Mr. Arnold had been under the weather, and so they had not been able to work with him. Because um, it just seemed we had an opportunity to, to make more requests from him that night, because they were certainly open, and they acknowledged mm -hmm. that there were issues, and they were new guys on the thing, so I, I hope we didn't miss an opportunity. Yeah, I mean, their email, um, and it didn't, I didn't get it up on the, um, meeting materials yet because it didn't come in in time but it said that he had been in the hospital and it did not allow them to discuss it over the phone so they asked to be continued till they could talk to the prop mr arnold about what they had been thinking we, of we doing we gave him a shellacking but i don't know what what, what is he doing is the question I so he nothing, he guess. said that Stephen, it sounded like they had come up with a few alternatives to satisfy the commission, but due to Mr. Arnold being in the hospital, um, they could not. It just says that he's been in the hospital and still has some issues, and it has not allowed them to meet or discuss over the phone. Okay. He did not elaborate, and I have to say I did not ask so about the health so the staff for him needs to work with Mr. Arnold and we'll circle back around on 821 where things are at. So I have to say Mr. Poole has stayed in, he's been pretty constant in no, staying in touch with like me. like two guys who really want to do right. That's why I just hope we didn't miss an opportunity because they did want to 
Yeah, and they were willing to bring down some of the wall. So. so usually I reach out to people if I don't hear from them, but he actually reached out to me first okay. asking for a continuance. What's the status on 69 Colonial? Are we going to be continuing that as well? We're going to be getting to that. I know. I'm so, just, hold on. It's a plan. One, one at a time. So we need a continuance on 67 Colonial Road, please. I'll make a motion to continue 67 Colonial Road to August 21st. All right, so we have Commissioner Sharon with the first. Do we have a second? I'll second. Commissioner Parent with the second and a roll call. Commissioner Jewell? Uh, abstain. Commissioner Jewell abst abstains. Commissioner Sharon? Yes. Commissioner Parent? Yes. Commissioner Wigglesworth is a yes. Three yeses, one abstention. Tracy. Um, all right, so 71 uh, R. Minebrook Road, this is the Weatherby violation, uh, has asked for a continuance to 821 on this one as well. So can I get a motion for continuance in 71 R. Minebrook? I'll make a motion that we continue 71 9 R. Minebrook to uh, 821. Okay, Commissioner Parent with the first. Do we have a second? I'll second. Commissioner Sharon with the second and a roll call. Commissioner Jewell? Yes. Commissioner Sharon? Yes. Commissioner Parent? Yes. Commissioner Wigglesworth is a yes. All right, on to public meetings, uh, also known as uh, Request for Determination of Applicability, RDAs. Uh, Nine Wakefield Ave, this is Mr. Gogger uh, with uh, retaining wall work. Do we have a representative for Nine Wakefield? All right, seeing none, do we have any, uh, any update? I have no update. I have left a voicemail, but I did not get a return call. All right, so can we get a motion to continue 8, uh, excuse me, uh, 9 Wakefield Ave to 821, please? I'll make a motion that we continue 9 Wakefield Ave to 821. Okay, Commissioner Parent with the first. Do we have a second? No. Not a second. Commissioner Sharon with the second and a roll call. Commissioner Jewell? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Commissioner Sharon? Yes. Commissioner Parent? Yes. Commissioner Wigglesworth is a yes. All right, next up is 91 Bates Point Road. This is the Pater uh, Project extension of a shed. And I'm going to call on uh, our board clerk, um, Commissioner Jewell, to read the public notice, please. In accordance with MGL Chapter 131, Section 40, as, amend, as amended, the Wetlands Protection Act, a public meeting will be held on a request for determination of applicability filed by Jason Pieter to determine whether the shed extension on 91 Bates Point Road in Webster, Mass, Assessor ID 50 underscore A underscore 49 underscore zero is subject to the Wetlands Protection Act and local wetland bylaw. The public meeting will be held in the Board of Selectmen meeting room, second floor, Webster Town Hall, 350 Main Street, Webster, Mass, on July 24th, 2023, at 5.30 p.m. Any person interested in this application or wishing to be heard shall appear at the time and place designated. For the Webster Conservation Commission, Don Portman, Conservation Agent. Okay, I'm going to call on Don Portman, our uh, commission staff, to just give us a quick update. The applications, um, you know, pretty, pretty simple. Um, Mr. Pieter is looking to um, have this proposed shed installed. Um, he's putting it on a stone found, well, a stone base. I took pictures. It's not on the water side of the house. It's on the other side of the house. Um, it is in within the buffer zone, um, but it's pretty. There's no digging involved, so it would pretty much be going right about where um, this vehicle is, right there. Okay. And this yeah, is any what. Any other oh. photographs? Just that one. Yeah. I think the only thing. The only issue I have with this is the uh, we're missing the setbacks on the the diagram. From the leg. 
Yeah, because we have multiple, don't we? You, you only went that way. From, you, from the lake? Yeah. So you didn't this, go, just, you just didn't to go get, in, you went this way, right? Um, can let's, I just give you some yeah, background? Let's, yeah, let's um, have Mr. Pater get back. So this is a, uh, I'm replacing a shed. So my grandparents bought the property in 1967, and they installed a 10 by 12 foot shed in that location. We believe it was that year. <laughs> um, that's what my mom recalls. She was probably younger than me at that point. Um, so we did an addition on my house this past year. Um, my neighbor, Mr. Turner, also did a brand new reconstruction. Um, and the shed was taken down at the request of Mr. Turner, uh, just for ease of access to his property. Um, otherwise, we wouldn't have taken it. We wouldn't have taken it down until this year. Um, and really what I want to do is replace what I had. Um, the only change I would say from that is I'm actually, I actually want to make it smaller. So I want it to be 10 by 16, so 16 in length, not 18 in length. Um, aesthetically, it looks better in the area, and it gives us a little bit more space. That width is 21 feet. So in talking with uh, Ms. Portman, um, the closest this, the, the, the property line is 75 feet from the water. So the closest this is going to be to the water is 75 minus, with a one-foot setback, um, you know, probably 55 feet maximum distance to the water. And the area that the old shed was put on was asphalt. Um, so an impervious surface. This is going to be crushed zone, okay. better for, uh, for controlling runoff. Um, that's actually the preferred way for installing a shed. It helps the, the shed not to twist and warp. Um, so, you know, kind of one of the interesting things I saw looking at this is that if I was going from uh, um, grass to, or actually the, the regulation uses lawn, to uh, asphalt, or am asphalt or stone, it would be an uh, administrative approval. But because I'm going from asphalt to stone, kind of the reverse order, I would argue, uh, it's an RDA, so mm. um, it's, yeah, so that's basically it. It's your mm. plug-in place. It's going to be, it's primarily, I keep my, it's for pellet storage. I keep my pellets in my garage right now, and it's a pain in the butt trying to move cars in and out, and if yeah. I'm able to put them in a little bigger of a shed, that would be uh, Just idea. a rhetorical question. What about the, what about the roof drops off? Is that going to go into the... Uh to the question yeah, I was, I was going to ask about the, um, just the roof runoff. Are you going to have that running towards, towards the house or you're going to put, are you going to put a, uh, so uh, there was, there's going to be at least a, uh, a one foot, uh, one foot of stone around the outer edge yeah. of the, uh, okay. of the shed. So I don't suspect any significant roof runoff to occur. Um, the area, in front of that will be obviously asphalt, but I don't suspect there, you know, we could definitely put a, you know, gutter system on it if that's something okay. you want to see. I motion for a negative determination. Okay. So um, we've got a motion on the table for a negative determination. Do we have a second? Did you want to ask? Something? I'll second that. Okay. Um, so we've got uh, Commissioner Jewell with the first, Commissioner Parent with the second, and a roll call. Commissioner Jewell? Yes. Commissioner Sharon? I motioned it. <laughs> Commissioner, yes. Commissioner Perrin? Yes. And Commissioner Wigglesworth is yes. All right, thank you. All right, thank you. Have a good evening, Mr. You Peter. too. Thank you. All right, folks, so um, the next project, which is six uh, Bates Crossing, um, this is Mr. Stelmack. Um, you may remember from nine, five, nine, um, he was looking to do a patio in his beach area. Do we have a representative? Mr. Stelmack, no. Um, all right, so um, has he asked for a formal continuance? So um, I had spoken, so I had contacted Mr. Stelmack just to touch base because I had not heard from him. I was confirming whether or not he was going to be attending this evening's meeting. He was a little confused by what actually transpired at the May 9th meeting. So okay. I sent him copies of the meeting minutes. Okay. Um, because he had thought it was totally denied and pretty much tossed out. 
Um, so after reading the meeting minutes, he understands that the commission was looking for changes. Um, but I only sent him the meeting minutes this afternoon off of conversation we had earlier in the day. So he has asked for continuance and is going to kind of reread the meeting minutes and thoroughly see what the commission was looking for as far as the floodplain, et cetera. Okay. All right. So can we get a continuance uh, for Mr. Stelmack? Six Bates Crossing to 821, please. I'll make a motion that we continue six Bates Crossing to 821. Commissioner Parent with the first. Do we have a second? Commissioner Jewell with the second and a roll call. Commissioner Jewell? Commissioner Sharon? Yes. Commissioner Parent? Yes. Commissioner Wigglesworth is a yes. All right. Uh, next up here, we've got 31 Wakefield Ave. This is uh, Kenneth Morey and Michelle Chirillo's dock installation application. So if you wouldn't mind, come on up. Yep, come on on up. How are we doing, Ken? Good. I just want to put in a simple dock. Okay. <laughs> So, all right, so we've got a photograph here. Oh, sorry. Um, I'm just going to ask uh, Commissioner Jewell to read the public notice, please. Well, Don cues up some photos. In accordance with MGL Chapter 131, Section 40, as amended, the Wetlands Protection Act, the public meeting will be held on a request for determination of applicability filed by Kenneth Morey and Michelle Chirillo to determine whether the dock installation at 31 Wakefield Ave in Webster, Mass, Assessor ID 50 underscore C underscore 15 underscore zero is subject to the Wetlands Protection Act and local wetland bylaw. The public meeting will be held in the Board of Selectmen meeting room, second floor, Webster Town Hall, 350 Main Street, Webster, Mass, on July 24th, 2023 at 5.30 p.m. Any person interested in this application or wishing to be heard should appear at the time and place designated. For the Webster Conservation Commission, Don Portman, Conservation Agent, published on July 17, 2023. Okay, and um, I just want to just remind both of you, please speak into the microphone. Thank you. Um, and I'm just going to call on our board staff, Don Portman, and just give a quick update. So the RDA application came in. I reviewed it. I went out, took pictures. Um, the only thing that I did find when we were trying to upload it to the me meeting materials, it's a little bit grainy. Um, so I did give all the commission members a copy as well. So you Thank can you. see the numbers um, a little bit clearer. And hopefully that satisfies the commission and I see no reason not to move forward. Okay. Mr. Ken, how are you? Good. Thank good. You. Good. So looking to permit your dock, um, you're going to be permitting your dock in the same location it was before? No, it's a little bit different. A little bit different. Okay. It's gonna, I'm going to put a little L on the end of it. Okay. All right. But same, same place that it, it's been. Okay. Um, all right. So it's going to connect to the same uh, area at the shore. So there's no new disturbance of BVW or shoreline. We can see it right here. Um, and then you're going to be putting uh, a small little L at the end. Um, one thing on, on this app that I'm not actually seeing is the square footage. Do you have the full? That was 228. I actually put it in a letter. I sent you a letter, okay. too. Okay. The actual letter. What, I, what I would recommend for you when you do submit this off is just uh, just write it in on here so that they've also got it in the application. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, so, commissioners, um, any um, questions, discussion? Well, I thought we weren't doing this. I'm sorry? I thought we weren't having anything to do with where we're I, I, I thought can't. that was Chapter 91. Yeah, this is a chapter. It's a license for the dock. But... It's going to be going in the same same location. I just thought this wasn't our jurisdiction. So. We still have to look at the interface between the body of water mm -hmm. and the wetland shoreline and buffer zone. So no disturbance at all. 
and in my opinion, um, you know, there's, it's not like they're going to be doing any disturbance. So, any questions? I think the only question I have was on the height okay. of the uh, of the platform and that and that profile view. Sure. Don't we have to have that, like the because we have to have public access along there? That would be, see the stairs coming down? It's for access for them, but that's where the, they would have the public right Good to come point. up through the steps. Good yep. point. All right. <laughs> All right. Thank you for making that public access on your yes. Talk. So when they get their mailing, so when they get their mailing back from the state, they'll have that sticker. They'll just stick the sticker on the side, and the public can just go up it. and over. Okay. Um, all right. Any other discussion? If not, do we have a motion here? I'll make a motion for negative determination on 31 Wakefield Ave uh, installation of a dock application. Okay. Commissioner Parent with the first, and do we have a second? I'll second. Commissioner Sharon with the second, and a roll call. Commissioner Jewell? Yes. Commissioner Sharon? Yes. Commissioner Parent? Yes. Commissioner Wigglesworth is a yes. Thank and. Um, Don will have your paperwork for you in another week or so. All right. Okay? You. All right. Take night. care, Ken. Thank you. Thank you. All right, folks. So we're on to 77 Bates Point Road. This is Randy and Donna Becker for their dock installation. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to call on our board clerk, Robin Jewell, to read the public notice, please. In accordance with MGL Chapter 131, Section 40, as amended, <clears throat> the Wildlife Protection Act, a public meeting will be held on a request for determination of applicability filed by Randy and Donna Becker to determine whether the dock installation at 77 Bates Point Road in Webster, Mass, Assessor ID 50 underscore A underscore 53 underscore zero is subject to the Wetlands Protection Act and local wetland bylaw. The public meeting we held in the board selectment meeting room, second floor, Webster Town Hall, 350 Main Street, Webster, Mass, on July 24, 2023, at 5.30 p.m. Any person interested in this application or wishing to be heard should appear at the time and place designated. For the Webster Conservation Commission, Don Portman, Conservation Agent, published on July 17, 2023. Great. Thank you, Robin. And I'm just going to call on Don Portman, our commission staff, to just give the board an update as to where things stand on the application. So I received this RDA application. Um, after review, I deemed it complete and thorough. All the information that I believe the Conservation Commission needs in order to make a educated decision on if it should get a negative or a positive, and I see no, no reason not to proceed forward. Okay, thank you, Don. Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Becker, how are you doing? All right, thank you for your application. And um, commissioners, if uh, Don, you wouldn't mind, oh, blank here. Oh, you're loading, thank you. Um, so, um, all right, there we go, photos. Now, first, first question, is this dock connecting to where it's always connected at the shoreline? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, and, and we actually do have a little mistake on here. We forgot one 4 by 10 foot dock on the actual document. So if you pull up the, this page here, if, if I could just. Yep, support. sure. So the 584 square feet we're supposed to have. Ten footer okay. How we both missed it. My fault. <laughs> That's okay. Don is falling on the sword. Um, okay. So there is there is a third doc which we'll put on a revision and hand it to uh, Don um, tomorrow. So okay. um, when you calculate all of the square footage, I can calculate it for you, dock by dock. There's a total of 600 square feet okay. there. However, it overhangs stairs, which is where it always says. Um, we did in the past, if you look to the middle of the page, there's a set of stairs. We did in the past have two sets of docks yep. that connected. And I think in accordance with Chapter 91, we learned <laughs> that you should only have one connecting point. So we've configured it 
with one, con one connecting point there. We've also included uh, the jet ski lift, which is on the side, as that is something you have to include that's yes. on the bottom, as well as two jet ski lifts, but they actually are uh, kayak lifts. So Great. the sum of all of these, when you do the square footage, um, is 600, as I said, and then we've got the overhang of about 16 square feet, uh, which overhangs the existing concrete stairs uh, to subtract, and that's the 584. And this is pretty much the setup we've had for the past, I don't know, 25 or so years, except we had two, two physical access points. Okay. On the photo, it doesn't look the way you have the access point. What is the distance from your neighbor? It looks like it's a shorter distance than the opposite side. Now, so the distance, if you go to the actual uh, map that Donna drew up. I want to see that, how it goes closely. Yeah, so it's 20, it's 20 feet. The, the left side of that dock is 20 feet away from the neighbor's property. And that's basically where it's always been. Okay. Um, the other thing I just want to bring up too is it's already it's previously disturbed, so there's no new disturbance uh, in the shoreline or the buffer zone. So, correct. Um, are there any other questions, folks? Okay. Hearing no uh, discussion or any other questions, do we have a motion? My motion for a negative determination for 77 Bates Point Road. Okay, negative determination. All right, uh, uh, Commissioner Jewell with a negative determination. First motion, do we have a second? I'll second. Yes. All right, <laughs> Commissioner <laughs> Parents got the second. Um, so uh, roll call please, Commissioner Jewell. Yes. Commissioner uh, uh, Sharon. Yes. Commissioner Parent. Yes. Commissioner Wilkes Worth is yes. All right. Thank you, Commissioners. And, um, You'll, uh, you'll get that updated plan to her. Yeah. Thank you very much. So. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Moving along here. All right. So we've got uh, 28 Laurelwood Drive here. This is Jay and Stephanie uh, Carboneau. Retaining walls, landscaping, and a concrete pad. And I'm going to call on Commissioner Jewell in a moment to read the public notice for 28 Laurelwood Drive. In accordance with MGL Chapter 131, Section 40, as amended, the Wetlands Protection Act, a public meeting we held on a request for determination of applicability by by Jay and Stephanie Chabonneau to determine whether the construction of two retaining walls, landscaping, and concrete pad at 28 Laurelwood Drive in Webster, Mass, Assessor ID 62 underscore B underscore 2 underscore 0 is subject to the Wetlands Protection Act and local wetland bylaw. The public meeting we held in the Board of Select meeting room, second floor, Webster Town Hall, 350 Main Street, Webster, Mass, on July 24, 2023, at 5.30 p.m. Any person interested in this application or wishing to be heard should appear at the time and place designated. For the Webster Conservation Commission, Don Portman, Conservation Agent, published on July 17, 2023. Great, thank you for that, Commissioner Jewell. And I'm just gonna call on, uh, I almost said Commissioner Portman, but staff. <laughs> Don Portman, our staff, to uh, give a, uh, an update to the board, please. Okay, so I received this RDA application from the Chabonneaus. I, after review, I found the application to be um, extremely complete along with some very nice photos to exactly depict what they were looking to get the commission's approval on. I also went out, viewed the property, um, took a few more pitches, um, but they made nice notations exactly where things were going. Um, I think they, you know, portrayed their project quite clearly and I see no reason for the commission not to hear hear it and make a decision. Mr. and Mrs. Charbonneau. Yes. I called you Carbonneau, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, why don't you take us through what you're looking to do? Well, we have uh, right now from 
can you see the picture? We of the see house? it right now. Yeah, Anyways, um, we have where our patio ends. We have a slope going down to the water. We want to level that and build two retaining walls to, okay. so we can level that off. We will be doing landscaping with uh, down as you're looking at it down the, from the water down the left side of the house, continuing our rip rock that we have there, okay. and make the land more useful for recreation and stop runoff that's going down there now as it is. Yay, how okay. high will the wall be? We're going to have the first wall is going to be three feet. Mm -hmm. Then we'll have a one foot gap, one to two feet gap, and then another three foot wall. And that six feet up will bring us level to the bottom line of our patio. Okay. At the bottom of the patio wall. Yeah. Now, from where that, let's call it the second wall closest to the water, what are you planning on doing between that wall and, and the water? We'll put sod in there. Okay. And All right. right up near the patio, we'll have beds where we'll have native plants. Okay. So you're going to take sod right up to pretty much the shoreline? No. No, because we still have a beach area there. We want to leave okay. that uh, separate and right. perhaps just do sand, section it off and do sand at a later date. Right, right now, we're only looking to complete our work from the retaining wall up to the patio. Okay. And to the um, side. But are you, are you planning on adding sand down by the water? Um, we don't know what we want to do with that, and if oh, we do, you know, can't do change, that. we'll be back. We're just not doing anything that, now. Yeah. yeah. The only way that you'd be able to do that, and I'll be honest with you folks, I've seen this with a lot of folks, with a lot of properties. They want to box in a little area for, for sand, mm -hmm. and it ends up running into the, into the lake. And the state really views, views that as pollution they view it as filling a wetland believe it or not um so if you were going to do something like that it would need to be boxed off and well away from the shoreline but uh, dawn can can vouch and show you some photographs some it as soon as the water hits it 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 ends up running into it it that. becomes yeah, messy I'm aware of that we've had so, the property since 1963 yeah, so back yeah. then we all the sand we had ended up at our neighbors oh, anyways yeah but that's not part of this project nor would we okay. ever consider doing anything until we spoke with you folks okay now do you have the high water mark because what is the distance between the, the retaining wall and the lake at, what, at the as you're looking at it from the house uh, we have it we would like to have it 10 feet but as as it moves um, okay we're looking at my house from the water so on this side it would start at 10 feet and finish at about 20 feet it's going to be moving away as the shoreline um, mm -hmm. curves away from our house we're going to have the wall straight across so each okay. each foot as we go down closer left to right moves farther back from the shoreline mm -hmm. it's a okay. minimum of 10 feet we'd like to start with at the we'll left side facing the house Mr. Mr. Chairman sure um, and Commission members this stake right here the Chabonneau's in put in that's okay. the 10 foot mark okay. so that pots at 10 feet and then per the sketch it goes 20 feet over here okay so it's a little closer on the left hand side there than it is on the right so right. you're gonna just sort of kind of a little bit or you're gonna go straight across well if we were to try to curve it, it would be no more than five feet total. You know, we want to talk yeah. about the landscape because that would just be an aesthetic choice. Okay. Uh, whether we want to kind of follow the shoreline, but we'll still be well. Uh, as you get to the right side, it'll be still farther than it would be where we started. Okay. The shoreline. Now, this are you going to be upgrading this little sidewalk that comes comes down and almost to the to the shore area? Oh, hold on. We were just going to leave it. We just put flowers along the other side and okay. other shrubbery, you know, just to hold the dirt so we don't have all this runoff into the lake. Absolutely, yeah. No, and you've got the right mindset because you start start picking around at something, you, we get one of these storms that we've been getting, you can end up with a mud bowl. Well, yeah. um, and I can see right in the middle of your property there's one spot. It looks like it comes over what used to be a little, like, railroad tie. I can see right next to the kayak there yeah so with the walkway I mean that's all going to be filled in the sod with you, the you, walkway that's concrete we're not oh, going to do yeah, anything with that right now so. and with anything would be done we would we, we put in the other application or the, the notice of intent to do paving work there 
but we're okay. not going to do that right now. We just want to work on the walls All right. and get the landscaping set up. Okay. All right. Um, pretty, I mean, you've got a pretty robust planting plan in and around the, some, the concrete pad. Um, now, that is that concrete pad... Um, I, I didn't remember Don maybe back to the to the house because I was looking more at the water is there a deck above that concrete pad oh no, yeah just want to put okay a, a maintenance shed there okay yeah. now is that gonna be pervious are you gonna just do straight concrete all over the place well our landscaper said he would put the um, just that we're just gonna get a pad big enough to put the, the shed down on so okay that, that answers your question. all right um, because that's something you, you also want to think about at the house, um, where that water is going to run. And if it f channelizes, right. um, it can, you can end up with some erosion. Yep. So probably some, you know, you've got some good planter beds there. And if they pitch it enough so that it just goes into that, it should, right. should be okay. Right. I would use at least three-quarter inch stone or two-inch river rock stone. My, my opinion. Um, commissioners, any other questions on this project? Well, I have several questions. Sure. Um, the first comes with elevation. This looks like a pretty level lot, and so we don't see any elevation issue. We don't know what the elevation is here and where we are as far as the floodplain is concerned. So I think this drawing needs to have that okay. so we understand the project. Um, okay. Radiance. Gradients coming down here. Yep. And um, just and also just so you know, the flood for the most part around the lake, the flood, the mean high water mark is 480. Mm -hmm. So if you use that as a rule of thumb, um, but it could be a little less. It could be a little bit more based on where where you're at. If you go to, I will tell you, if you go to Mass Mapper and you turn on the FEMA flood layer, you do have a little bit of flood floodplain storage. So what that is, is when the lake is at its highest, if we get one of these deluges like we've been getting, the, when the lake runs high, the lake needs these areas of flood they call it um, compensatory mitigation for flood storage. And that will um, allow for the water to be able to come up, flood, do its thing, and then come back down. So you may have seen how you've lived there for so long. You may sometimes see that you've got a little less in the back than... Yeah, we've been there since 1963. The place yep. uh, we were proposing to shed for one of the walls, we've never had the water come up that high. Even yep. Several years ago when we were in California, we got a call on a dock for floating the lake. Yeah. So we're, we're far from uh, any, anywhere where the water has ever come up. So, in, so when we approve a plan, we need to approve the plan for what, what, what we're asking here. So on this one, I would just, you know, like Commissioner Parent had mentioned, just put a, you know, calculate on your plan here what's, you know, what, what your highest point on here, what you're sloping down to, or if it's going to be le obviously leveling out two feet. And then I would down near the shoreline, I would just have that mean high water level there and just write that all in um and then uh commissioners anything else you said you had yeah, something yeah, else there's there. a few more things um okay so the concrete pad extends past the house as proposed here um and you have a gutter that comes down in that corner and so i was curious to how you're going to deal with that water is it going to go onto the pad is it Oh, up for the drain. Oh, yeah, the, other, oh, the pipe underneath. Uh, yeah, see, so there's a gutter on that left side yep. coming down, and you're you're showing that the pad's actually extending past that, so we've got to deal with some water here. Yeah, um, good good point. Um, I can't say that with the drawing we gave you is so precise. I'd have to go and look at that again, yep. but we will take care of that. You might want to just find a way to get that into the ground. So. I would probably recommend, and if you've got someone on retainer that's going to be doing the work, probably talk about somewhere over there putting in just a dry well. Take care of that water runoff. Okay. Dry well would probably be the simplest option. Okay. 
what we're going to be meeting after ten, you know everything we have getting back with our landscape architect uh, yeah. not the architect the uh, landscape um, and have him go through these things with us okay. and I think what's also missing is the uh, you know the how you actually constructing this wall like how deep are you going into the ground uh, what kind of um, porous material is going to be under it and above it yeah that's so the construction of the wall? Oh. Yeah, they said the only excavation would be going down two feet. Okay. Uh, well, I'm sorry, one foot trench below grade. He's going to add six inches crushed stone for wall base, mm -hmm. bury one block below grade fill, and then construct the walls. Got it. Okay, okay. so that was put in our project sequence mm -hmm. uh, material that we gave to Don. One thing that I will also um, urge you to just add to your plan too, seeing how you got a couple iterations that you need to get back to us. Um, we require as a board any work um, that has machinery near the water, you need a spill kit. It's called a spill kit. Oh yeah, so, yeah. So yeah. He, he spoke okay. to us yeah. about that. Yeah. Right. So exactly. that's that's if a machine breaks a hydraulic line or a brake line or anything like that, it's it can be dealt with immediately and we don't have an issue. Yep. So yep. um <laughs> and Jay, what about an order of what how you're gonna the timing of you're gonna do things? Well we'd like to have it. this done beginning in October. But if you could just give us in addition to the um the gradient and oh, oh, when will we get yeah, this to like you? What, no, no, like what, when you're doing what? What's the sequence of work? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah they just need to update there. the sequence a little yeah, bit, a little add those things okay. to the plan. Oh, you've got it. And um, yeah. we can get you back on, on 821. And, and, and anything we, else, folks? And what are we doing at the water? How are we protecting this project? We won't project? be here. We'll have it. We'll have in the in the order of conditions um, a erosion sediment control barrier. You're going to need a silt fence and straw wattle. So you might as well call that out on the plan as well. But that'll be in your order of conditions. Is there any digging for the patio to be installed? Uh, yeah, I would think so. Yeah. So you're probably going to put dirt someplace for a period of time, or not taken away but uh okay so you need to sort of spell that out because we need to know how that's being cared for yeah stockpile just as, i would designate a stockpile area even if it's for yeah. stuff to just be stored yeah yeah anything else folks anything else rich good I'm catch good. yeah, yeah we are rooms. not in town on the 21st okay so um, the 28th okay uh, is that our, what's, is it, oh, that would be two when's weeks. our next meeting after the 21st, Don? September, right? Uh, September 11th. September 11th. <laughs> Can we do it virtually? Can you suggest that? Yeah. Shoot, that's too bad. There is no possibility. Uh, is there a, an, an August 7th? Would we be able to get it done in a week? Yeah. We, we have one agenda item for the for August 7th. It's the high school, and it's a really big project. So that's a special Question. meeting for that. So you, you're working with somebody? Yeah. They could actually bring the plans and represent yeah. you on the 21st if. Okay. You don't necessarily, you don't have to be here. They can be here to represent you. Yep. Okay. Get Mark to come with, with him. So you won't be alone. Yeah. Right. If you trust them. Yeah. <laughs> we do. <laughs> All right, and if there's any questions, please reach out. You've been working with Dawn, so she can, she can uh, get any additional information in your answers from questions. So anything else? Question. If we right. didn't do the pad at this time, let's say we just took that off the table. Okay. What about the other work that was submitted? Let's say we just took the pad out of the equation for well, this time. Still, we would still need that updated plan from you with all those things on it in order to make a... It's just not possible to get that submitted and approved without coming back to them. No, we do need to go because once we issue, the, the, once we've asked for things on a plan, they need to be on the plan, and then we need to. Okay. We, the, the conditions that we issue are for the exact plan that's submitted. Got it. Okay. okay. And then Very after good. that, you would need to do an amendment and on an RDA. There's no, you don't do an amendment on an RDA. Got it. All right, All right sir. Yep. All right. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Mrs. Uh, Charbonneau. All right. So. Um, do you still want that 21st date? We'll put you on that 21st. Um, is it possible for us to contact Dawn? 
Absolutely. We could make a motion now for the 21st, and if you want to continue it after that, we yeah. can continue. Yep. Yeah. So you better off grabbing that slot. Uh, so let's set it for the 21st. Yeah, and if you need to push it out, we can push it out again. It's not a big deal. Thank you. All right. So, folks, um, let's see here. 28 Laurelwood Drive. Um, we need a motion for continuance to 821, please. I'll, I'll make, make a, a motion to continue 28 Laurelwood Drive to 821. Okay. So, Commissioner Sharon with the first. We have a second. I'll second that. Commissioner Parent with the second and a roll call. Commissioner Jewell? Yes. Commissioner Sharon? Yes. Commissioner Parent? Yes. Commissioner Wigglesworth is a yes. Great. All right. So now we've got 126, 128 Point Breeze Road. Uh, this is the snow project, uh, and this is for dock installation, Chapter 91, continued from 71023. How are we doing, Mr. Snow? I'm well. How are you? Great. All right. My turn. <laughs> okay, so Don, I think you've got some photographs. Do you want to just update us uh, where things stand? In the yes, office? I can do that. Okay, so just to refresh the commission's memory, um, this application was continued from July 10th. Okay. So there, so that third, just to reiterate, the third dock that we saw off to, which would be right. my left, your, I guess you're right. That's on. That would be for, that's for zero. Correct. Okay. All right. So now we're just looking at these two here. Total of 400 square feet. Well, that's, it, the two docks total 400. Yeah. You add the jet ski lifts is what they're called um that adds another 60. okay <clears throat> so okay. it's 460 oh, i total. see it down in the right corner yep okay so it's on here um go ahead yeah when i was here last two weeks ago we talked about this plan in zero um, we kept this one open because of the jet ski lifts weren't yep. shown so i added those adjusted the square footage and i think that was the only change we made on this plan is um 
There's a sheet two to it which shows the profile, and I added jet ski lifts to the profile as well. Okay. All right, commissioners, uh, questions, comments? It might be my view when I was looking at the pictures. Is there one double jet ski lift and then one single? Is that what I saw? No, there's actually two singles. Um, there's only one jet ski on the lifts, but there's two separate lifts. They're just they just side by side, side by so side, it looks yeah. like a double. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this dock and the other dock connect to what is obviously previously disturbed and it's been there for some time. Yeah, the stairs. Um, do you have a, another photo of the other one, Don? The other way? And you're just, once again, you're planning on keeping these in the same location, right? Yes, sir. Okay. <coughs> and this was the other one. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. Um, now I'm just going to, go ahead. That's the other one that you're looking for. Yep. Okay. Um, I'm just going to put this out there. You got two docks. The state may ask you to either reconfigure it, or one might need to one might need to go. Um, that's a Chapter 91 issue, right? It is Chapter 91. Yeah, we're just looking at the interface where this connects, but. Um, you know, it, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I like to be honest with people, and you could have an uphill battle. Yeah, I'll, that's, that's for you, and that's between Boston, you and Boston. I'll circle um, back when I'm done. I'll let that's you know why I kept trying go. to, I tried to get you to split this as far as the docks, because if you, if you file for a, a permit on one of these properties and you file for the other one, then I don't think you're going to have a problem. Because you have a, you're, it's 126 to 128, right? It is, sir. Yeah. So if you had, if you hit a separate dock permit for 126, and you have a separate one for 128, <laughs> you won't ever, you won't have the problem that you, I think you're going to have. Okay. Well, I perhaps I shot myself in the foot by putting the RDA on the same, the same lot. So we'll, they see, have to connect. we'll see how it shakes out. Does the um, RDA have to connect with the dock permit? Does the RDA need to connect with the dock permit? He's filing the, the RDA for the dock. I'm sorry. I mean his other project where he's combining. Right? Yeah. I think that's what's happening is he's sort of connecting that work mm -hmm. with the docks. But the docks really should be a separate, it really should be a separate filing. I agree. Which is what he's doing. So, but I do, where this gets a bit, messy yeah but from my from my profession what i do and i work with all these folks that work in and dep and waterways i just know that they may look at this and be like yeah you gotta do something different here otherwise we're gonna have to sure. get one out of there yeah is so. the plan to split the lot eventually and have two separate deeds no ma'am no. no no too bad <laughs> so um, but from our standpoint of BVW shoreline disturbance, it's previously disturbed and it's just connecting a dock. So, um, anything else It's chapter 91 and, and they'll get in touch with you on problems. Yeah. I'll circle back when I'm done. I'll let you know how it <laughs> um, made out. Yeah. We'd like to know. So commissioners. Um, any more questions, comments? No. All right. Do we have a motion here? I'll make a motion to uh, negative determination for 126, 128 Point Breeze Road on uh, the dock application. All right. Commissioner Parent with the first on a negative for 126, 128 Point Breeze Road. Do we have a second? I'll second. Commissioner... Sharon with the second and a roll call. Commissioner Jewell? Yes. Commissioner Sharon? Yes. Commissioner Parent? Yes. Commissioner Wigglesworth? Yes. 
All right, so next up, we're on to our public hearings, notices of intent, also known as NOIs. And we've got 126-128 Point Breeze Road. Uh, this is the snow project, demolition of a house, garage, construction of a new uh, house and garage. This is continued from 7 10. So you've got new, new plans? I do. Okay. You want me to jump right into it? I'm um, just going to give Dawn a second to pull this up here. The computer seems to be a little slow. Very. All right. That good, Don? Good? Okay. All right, Mr. Snow, take it away. <clears throat> All right. Um, there was, at the, at the, res at the end of our, um, our earlier meeting, there were a number of issues I was tasked to take care of. Basically, just plan edits, um, adding stockpiled uh, storage areas. There was a waddle to be added, yep. a note or two, that type of stuff. Sort of administrative updates to the plan. Mm -hmm. While I was doing that, um, we met with a structural engineer, and basically there was um, a situation where we had, on the original plan, a two-story foundation built into the wall, yep. into, the, into that embankment off of Point Breeze. Basically, that became cost prohibitive, so I had to revise more than just the administrative changes to the plan. Okay. So that's what this is. And basically, what ended up happening was it's the same footprint of house. Mm -hmm. We moved it back essentially on top of the existing foundation that's going to be um, raised as part of removing the house. Okay. So the new house is going to be essentially where the old house <coughs> used to be. Um, we're back to a single story foundation instead of two stories. So I had to make that change. I had to regrade the stairway to get down to the house at that mm -hmm. point. Um, and then the garage, because it was tied to the original house. That's gone back to the original location, and that will be constructed over the existing foundation. Okay. Follow so far. Mm -hmm. um, as a result of that, we're not going to change that property line up by the road. We're not going to okay. be able to straighten that out. We're going to go back to what ex what's existing now. Um, the house on Zero Point Bridge Road, that location does not change. There was a two-story garage, a two-car garage originally proposed on Zero Point Breeze. We pared that down to a 12-foot garage because of the narrowness of the lot at that point. So those are the those are the significant changes. Everything else is a result of that. Okay. All right. So we moved. How far? How far away from the shoreline are we with any kind of develop, development or? How far from the shore is what? Yeah, how far? OK, all right, I, I'm seeing, I thought that was the shoreline. Um, <laughs> that's the shoreline, OK. I thought, see where you come out off the deck, there's some steps down. I thought that was the water. Um, oh, no. I forgot that you've got that little terrace there. Yeah, that's just a okay. landscape wall. You can see the 50-foot buffer. Yep. We'll give you an idea. Okay, yep. I do have a scale if we want to take off. Exactly yeah, I, I, I've got one too. So, um, But we're still not doing anything with that walled terrace area. You're going to still leave that natural. Yeah, that's You probably just put up an erosion control barrier there. Yeah, so there's that, actually two. There's one at the base of that wall and there's yep. the waddle down along the the shoreline that you had recommended okay. would show up on sheet two. Okay. Um, all right. So now what is, so you're going to put the, obviously you're putting the house in almost the exact same location. Um, the, is that a deck or is that a concrete patio that's coming off the house? That's a paved, a paver patio. Okay. Um, permeable or impermeable? Dry laid. Yes. Okay. For purposes of the calcs I did, I considered it per impervious, but it is, for all intent okay. purposes, pervious. Okay. Do you have Cultex on here? Um, we do. Yeah. We still have four. We have one in each of the driveways for the garages. Okay. And, and I there's see one that behind one, yeah. 
the point the house at 128 and there's one in front of the house at zero. Oh yeah I see that okay and those are um, HD 180s you had asked okay. me that before yep. so um are you still going to do the walkout basement with two levels, or is this just on, on slab? All right, so you're going to have a regular basement. Walkout basement, okay. with two, yes. Okay. Um, now, what about these, the walkways? Are you up, up, upgrading the walkways, paver, pavers? Real ones? Yeah. Yeah, they're stone pavers. Okay. All right. Same thing, dry laid. It won't be, they won't be set in concrete or anything like that. But for purpose of the impervious calc, I included all that. Okay. So now with, obviously there was going to be a subdivision of some sort that was going to run right through there. Between this, zero between, and 120. Yeah. Yes. How much additional square footage did you end up on this lot? How much additional square footage? Yeah. Because now, because now you're kind of you're bending the line, so you took away some square footage for the lot on zero, and you're adding to this lot. So I was just curious. Um, zero point breeze, the existing lot. Is that, well, existing now, 6,286. 6, okay. It's actually increasing to 6,460 because we are adding that little piece at the bottom by the lake. Okay. We're straightening it out down there. We're not straightening, it, straightening out up front. All right, so where you kind of skied over at the sh street, you kind of gave a little down in the water. Okay. Yeah. All right, so... Um, that was just what I, I just wanted to get an idea for square footage on that, Don. Can we just look at that plan again? Yes. Um, all right, so now your, um, oh, that's right. You were gonna put all of the stockpiling on zero until you're done and then where is the stockpile going to be for zero once you're completed? Um, I think what's going to happen is almost three phases. Um, the work on 126, 128, the stockpile will be where the house is going to be on zero. <clears throat> once the site work is done on the 126, 128, foundation work on that will happen, on zero will happen, and the stockpile for there will be up where the garage is proposed garage and then when that's all when the house there is done the last piece will be the garage okay and hopefully that won't that's a um i don't want to say it's a big filly area but that's um there's not going to be any extra material associated with that now have you updated your your plan sequence to reflect this within so that when we write the order of conditions that it, it's going to follow with the sequences because I believe so because I think we, the because if we stop in or if the state stops in and things are not the way they see in the sequence and whatnot they're gonna they uh, you can get dinged and you don't want that to happen um I've got in addition to building permits I've got two other stops one is planning board to straighten out that little piece in the back yeah, yeah. and the other is um, a one foot variance for the uh, garage on zero point breeze yeah, and I mean, like with any, because I mean, you're not the first person to come before us with something like this. So, for for just like you know, you're you're going through all the boards to get the proper permits. Things can't come. It's going to be in the order of condition that nothing can commence on the site until you've got all of your state, local, and you're not going to need any federal permits. But all of the different boards' permits are together, and that way. If there's any changes from planning or from zoning, you're gonna have to circle back around to us and let us know. And then if we need to amend it, then we need to amend it or a minor mod or however. But I just sure. wanna be upfront that it'll be in your order of conditions that you gotta go through the whole gamut. I get that. So, um, commissioners, questions? 
Did you say that the new house is going to go on the old house's foundation? Now? No, we're taking the foundation out, ma'am. It'll be over the same footprint. Basically. It's a little bit smaller, actually, than the existing house, um, but generally in the same place. It, it is further away from the lake than the existing house, but not as far as it was the first time around. But it's, it's a little bit smaller than the first one. It's just taller. Okay. Mr. Perrin, you have some, you seem to be, no. your head's smoking over there. Any? A complicated <laughs> project, and so. It, yeah, there's a lot. I mean, you've done a lot of, yeah. you know, you've done a lot of mock-up here. You've done, you're going to get a lot of language here. I think the thing is, is just making sure that everything is in sync with um, the other piece, which is unfortunately all the other boards are now are involved because of how you're. You know, you're, you're dividing, you're adding, right? you're, yeah, Break it's, Break the balls yeah. and see where they go. But. Um, so, but he's got, I mean, the criti critical thing here is he's, most of this work is at the 50 foot for this project, at the 50 foot buffer, a little bit closer. He's going to have a double erosion. He's putting the water into the ground. Uh, you know, uh, him and his wife, they, they, you know, they love the natural aspect of their property i mean um you know one thing that i think we should probably put in the conditions for this would be um to wrap all the trees that you're saving that way um more trees are not coming down than than necessary because we've we have had folks before where oh i'm not taking down i love my i love my lot i love it and then we go for an inspection and there's no tree there's no vegetation at all yeah so. the, the unfortunate thing is there was a tree up by at the at the frontage along zero point breeze that was it was preserved under the original plan that i i'm not sure i can do it anymore yeah. um, i took it off as worst case but i'm going to do what i can to save it yeah um, the good news is there's one in front of 122 128 that can be saved so yeah um, so trade off so what um, I think the, the important thing to do is, um, you know, probably with either orange ribbon, orange construction fence, wrap, wrap the trees you're going to keep. And then once you've got all the board approvals and you're ready to hit the ground running on it, you're going to have to call Dawn anyway. She's going to do an erosion and sediment control check. She can check the trees. She can check that. She'll cover the order of conditions with you. Okay. And then you should be should be ready to go and if there's any issues then you know she'll bring it back to the board or ask you to come back and we could talk through some stuff um and you'll put that in the order just it'll as all a be reminder. Yeah, it'll all be spelled out in, in the order our Very order good. of conditions is really thorough from building to if you encounter this if make sure that you take photos Audio at this point it's yeah it's all it'll yeah we out. have it really nicely laid out so um any other questions on this the only question i have is the driveway did you say that's going to be asphalt um and how are we grading that at the street yeah are we, are we yeah. dumping water onto the streets it slopes back to the gutter line slopes back to the gutter mm -hmm. yes sir okay He's got quite a bit of vegetated buffer around the backside. Mm -hmm. um, so probably what what would help with this would be, um, do you have any idea conceptually how you're going to be doing the, the roof line for that? For the garages? For the garage, yeah. Um, the 128, 126 slopes from right to left. Okay. This uh, shed, I, roof, I, I'm not sure what they call it. But from right to left as you look at it uh, i'm not sure about the small one okay. on zero point breeze um it was originally intended to slope to the front yeah so we may continue that what i would probably just consider on both of those and you could probably just condition it um would be to just capture that water because you do have quite a grade um but to just get it into a you know into a those, they're going to feed into the Coltac. Okay. All right. Yeah, because there's a Coltac in the front. Yeah, so but what's on the left side of the driveway? What is that? Left side of the driveway? Yeah. Um, that's what's it proposed to be? Grass? 
Okay. Are you going to be throwing seed down? Are you going to do sod? Um, I would sod this property. Yeah, I was going to say, because you do seed. Too slow seed. To yeah, yeah. I was going to say, if, if needed, you'd end up having to do jute netting and you're kind of right you're kind of shaded there it won't it'll take a while yeah. you know you get runoff from the road up currently i'm sorry do you get runoff from the road now um it slopes the existing driveway slopes down to the gutter of the road and then that flows down it's pretty flat out here yeah it does flow down towards zero point breeze and actually probably outlets across zero point breeze down towards where the water is that's probably what happens now but it's so flat it's hard to tell Oh. Now, are you going to keep that, um, or are you going to have to take that out, that wall that's holding up the street there? <laughs> what do you, I'm sorry. This, it, yeah. Right along. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm, I'm wall pointing wall. here. You need to be looking up <laughs> oh, there. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, um, that wall will stay. Okay. Mm -hmm. so gonna, the tree, all right, so you're going to access through where the garage is to get down there? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Almost where it goes down now. Well, essentially exactly where it goes down now. This is where the new stairs were. That's an old oak tree. Um, it's half an old oak tree because it goes up through the wires. So yeah. from one side, it looks really nice. From the other side, it. Joey half. loves us. Unfortunately, they hit their yeah, zenith eventually. <laughs> um, it is a nice tree. Yeah. All right. Any other questions, folks? OK. OK. Um, because this is a uh, public hearing and NOI, I do have to ask, is there anyone here uh, with public comment on 126-128 Point Breeze Road? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so hearing no public comment, can I get a motion to close the public hearing, please? I motion we close the public hearing on, what's your address? 128, 126, 128 Point Breeze Road. Okay, all right, so the first from Commissioner Jewell, do we have a second? I will second. Commissioner Sheeran with the second, and a roll call to close the public meeting. Com Commissioner Jewell? Yes. Commissioner Sheeran? Yes. Commissioner Parent? Yes. Commissioner Wigglesworth is a yes. Um, motion to issue order of conditions please, for 126, 128 Point Breeze Road. I'll make the motion to issue the order of conditions for 126, 128 Point Breeze Road. Okay, so we've got um, uh, first from Commissioner Sheeran, do we have a second? I'll second. Commissioner Parent with the second and a roll call. Commissioner Jewell? Yes. Commissioner Sheeran? Yes. Commissioner Parent? Yes. Commissioner Wigglesworth is a yes. Okay, so Dawn will have that together for you in the next few weeks. Thank you. Um, all right, so now we're on to Zero Point Breeze Road. Um, this is also the snow project right next door. Uh, construction of a single family home and associated site improvements continued from 7 10. So Dawn's going to pull up the current plan. They're um, gonna make one, right? After the well, is... I don't know if I want to tell you what's gonna happen. <laughs> but basically, I, um, what's ultimately gonna happen is zero is gonna turn into 126. The big house is gonna be one. Tw I'm sorry. The little zero is gonna turn into 128. Point Breeze Road. The cottage. No. Uh, no. Now, the cottage. So it's gonna be 128. At, zero is gonna be 128. The new house is going to be 126, and the cottage is going to be 126A, is ultimately what's going to happen based okay. on the 911 stuff. And same, I mean, same thing with this one, Mike. You know, we're just going to have it's got to be in the conditions because the state requires it that you got to get all those local permits together. Um, sure. And if we need to, what you probably need to do is either a minor mod or an amendment because we're we're issuing this as zero and once you get that number we then need to you need to go to the registry 
have them change it from zero point breeze to 120, 128, 126, whatever. Sure. Um, and then you should probably come back and then square everything up with the planning yeah, like, and conservation department. I want to do it right. So Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So, um, so here is zero um, integrated with uh, the neighboring lot. Um, but why don't you take us through what modifications you had to make on this? Um, everything that changed on this plan is between the house site and Point Breeze Road. Okay. And it really centers around reducing that original two-car garage, which was only 20 feet, I think, to begin with, down to 12. Okay. And not modifying that property line. Okay. Um, there's an easement showing up on this plan um, on the 128 side of that property line. It's just a, it's a maintenance easement because I'm trying to run the water line along the property line. Okay. So if that's the case, there'll be an easement there for maintenance. Um, the driveway's a bit narrower now because it's one car, not two. Okay. The stairway is all the same material. It's just a slightly different configuration to get down to where the, okay. where the entrance to the house is, and then it wraps around. And then I meshed up the grading with the existing garage to make sure that that was all going to work. Um, and everything seemed to to work out. Um, I am attempting to have a different pavement material. The 126, 128 driveway is labeled as bit, bituminous concrete, which is worst case. Um, I'm planning on doing something different for zero point breeze just because it's going to be a continuous driveway or continuous parking area and I want to be able to differentiate this belongs to those people, this belongs to these people. And, and I think aesthetically, it's it's much nicer solution well, too. What, so. you, what what is it going to be made out of? I didn't hear you say. Um, some sort of concrete pavers. Now they I do. They yeah, stuff. they do have concrete pavers that look just like regular concrete mm -hmm. pavers, um, and they're they're pervious. Um, the other thing too is if you have to go with a regular concrete, is just keep them further apart for infiltration. And then just put an extra three to six inches of crushed stone underneath okay. to allow that to, to, to filter through. Will we need the calculations? Um, the what's that? Will we need the impervious calculations for that? Well, that would be impervious. impervious so just yeah, keep sorry. them, you know, separate them like another quarter of an inch apart, you know, just to allow water to get in there so that it's not just a sheet. Um, it still doesn't under planning and zoning from what from what I understand which is different than than us we still look at storm water because we have to um, but we also need to make sure that we're steering folks like you that they might be creeping up on their 40 percent um, or if you're putting in something that might be impermeable um, in the lake district area which you can't get any more closer um, to try to get that water into the ground okay. um, so, you know, I'm just trying to, you know, obviously you, you've got your mindset here, but, you know, to make it a softer blow when you get to the other boards in case they start ripping you apart on do this and do that and change this and change that. Some of the best ways to drive down impervious is to look at your walkways and maybe just do, you know, like field stone um, here and there. Um, but I mean, you do have uh, uh, an interesting site here with quite a slope. Yeah. So it's actually in, because I was able to design it at ten scale. Um, it's it's pretty accurate, mm -hmm. and I uh, it's accurate in the sense I had to make sure it was going to work, um, and as a result, it's sort of drawn somewhat accurately. But anyway, yeah, it's fifty one steps from the road to the to the water. Okay, it's broken into three different. Areas sections, yeah. 51 stairs down to down to the wall. So yes, it's a challenging vertical site for sure. Okay, so now looking at so this house is going to be on on slab or is this going to have a walkout basement? Walk too? basement. Okay, so similar to the other one. Just one story above. Okay, the um, the patio in the back there, same thing. 
concrete? Do you... uh, some sort of pavers. Okay. All right. Um, and then there, yeah, I see the Coltec in the front. Do you have a secondary Coltec on this house? In the driveway. Oh, yeah. In front. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, what is our pervious calculation on this one? Non-pervious, I'm sorry. Impervious? Yeah. Do we have impervious calculation on this? Yeah. Because um, it looks pretty close. The total coverage is 25.37%. Okay. That's, um, I'm sorry, I took that back. That's next door. It's 31.42%. Um, 2,030 square feet. The lot's 6460. Okay. I think it looks really full because there is oh, the driveway now. And then the patio, but if you look outside, kind of take away from the Cultec, take away some of that other stuff, uh, there is quite a bit of natural area. Um, and then towards the back, you're actually going to be cleaning that up, right? On the, on, yes, sir. Um, and then you're leaving that nest, nest of trees there. Same thing, same thing that we talked about on the other property. I would probably just ribbon them or wrap them. So that when, you know, Dawn comes to do her inspection to allow you to start digging, you know, to start breaking ground, um, we see what's what's being saved. Well, Ed, um, we've been there for 20 years. We've, yeah. We've landscaped it for 20 years, and yeah. we're actually proposing to to remove what we can, store it, and then bring it back. Yeah, I remember. I remember your wife saying that. Yeah. We're, so. We have an effort to, to do that, but we'll see how it goes. Um, are you doing uh, where the where the patio kind of interfaces with with lawn? Are you doing anything between between that, or is it just going to be a step down and onto the lawn? That should be basically flush. Okay. With that condition. All right. Um, and that lawn goes all the way across behind the other house. Okay. <laughs> Commissioners, any particular questions on this one? Have you done the uh, the calculation? I mean, is there a reason why you're putting pervious on the driveway? Because of the calculation? No, just no. We're just I'm proposing a separate material for the aesthetics number one. Yeah, okay. Number two, the functionality of differentiating who owns this from yeah no I get that, that. I just but no I I worst cased the, the, the impervious calcs included all that include all the walkways okay any other questions anything else rich nope okay um so if there's no more discussion, um, because this is a public hearing, I'm going to open it up for the public. If there's any abutters with no. any. <laughs> no. We'll get to you, Robin. <laughs> um, all right, so with that, can I get a motion to close the public hearing, please? I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. All right, so <laughs> Commissioner Parent with the first, Commissioner uh, Jewel with the second, mm -hmm. and a roll call on closing the public hearing. Commissioner Jewel? Yes. Commis Commission Commissioner Sheeran? Yes. Commissioner Parent? Yes. Commissioner Wigglesworth is a yes. Motion to issue the order of conditions for zero Point Breeze Road. I will make the motion to do the order of conditions for zero Point Breeze Road. Okay. Commissioner Sheeran with the first. So we have a second. A second. Commissioner Jewell with second? Yes. All right. Roll call. Commissioner Jewell? Yes. Commissioner Sheeran? Yes. Commissioner Parent? Yes. Commissioner Wigglesworth is yes. All right. If there's any changes or whatnot, please partner with us. I will. And um, please read through your order. Yeah, you guys are more flexible, so, so I'll, I'll uphold right. my end of it for sure. Okay. 
right. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you. Appreciate All right. It. So um, the next item, 46 West Point Road, we need a motion to continue that to 821. Should we continue West Point Road to 821? All right, Commissioner Jewell with the first. Do we have a second? I'll I'll second. Commissioner Sheeran with the second and roll call. Commissioner Jewell? Yes. Commissioner Sheeran? Yes. Commissioner Parent? Yes. Commissioner Wigglesworth is a yes. And we need a motion to continue 69 Colonial Road. Uh, this is David and Kathleen Arnold, demolition of a home to 821. I'll make a motion to continue 69 Colonial Road to 821. All right. I second. Commissioner Parent with the first, Commissioner Jewell with the second, and roll call. Commissioner Jewell? Yes. Commissioner Sharon? Yes. Commissioner Parent? Yes. Commissioner Wigglesworth is a yes. And. 19 Cedar Point Road, Paquette Project. <laughs> Please step forward. <laughs> Joey, I thought we were done. I we were... <laughs> you lose. That's it. The meeting's over. <laughs> Let's put some energy into this meeting. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm good. Good. Almost there, yeah. huh? Three years building. Oh. Oh. But it looks great. Yeah. Ask Dawn, she's done it. <laughs> I like it. She wants to move in? Man, yeah. That. <laughs> Everybody that, says that. We get that a lot. We get that a lot. You got a really nice lot there. You really do. Yeah, people drive by all the time. They go, it looks great. Boy, did it take a long <laughs> It's time. definitely a change from what it used to be. Yeah. Yeah, all right, let's see, <laughs> let's see some photos, Dawn. You got them? Okay. No? You took a lot of pictures when she came. Um, yeah. Hi, Mr. Chairman. Can I address Robin for a minute? Absolutely. Okay. Oh, no, you can stay sitting there. I never got your email today with your pitches. Maybe it was too big of a file? Yeah, that happens. Sometimes that happens. iPhone photo shouldn't be too big, but... Oh. That's the only thing. So I... Yeah. So there's the driveway? Yeah, but you didn't... I sent it to, I'll put it right up here, I'll go to my sense, Yahoo, and Dawn, there's the picture, hi Dawn, hope these work, dportman at webster.mass.gov, yeah. no, it says sent, probably want to done it, drop, under my sent, <laughs> tap the download, All there right. they are, that's the hill, so I'll show you the ones, I don't know, I don't know either. I can show oh, them. Oh, you want to know what? Why? They come in now? Well, I'm thinking maybe the we have very strong fire blockers, and I'm wondering if it didn't, because wow. I didn't get it. Well, what she, what, she did, what she wanted from me, the only last was to make sure that the hill grew in. Yep. That's okay. the hill. So she wanted you to see that the hill grew in. So the file might have been so large with so many pitches that it came in as so it the server probably blocked it and the IT guy it's mainly the hill that they need to see so I'll pull up the other photos That's, that's really so, good because that could be a problem if it wasn't going through it. That came out gorgeous. So it's mainly the hill, so if you want to let them, the yep. Show them the hill. yeah, so if you bring up that, I'll show them the other photos yeah, that I took, and then this way they can make an educated decision. Yeah. If you don't mind, maybe just letting the chairman use your phone for a moment. Well, just so he can see what I what I had seen. See that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is the after. Okay. <laughs> it's nice. So that's the difference. So see how this had all washed out? Yeah, it's coming in. And it's we've 
Yeah, yeah. we've yeah. had quite a wet season. I know you took most of the hill out. <laughs> I have exactly that same problem. Yeah? Yes. Um, so that's what you're comparing, that one. photo that she's showing you. Um, this is what they had, and they bought a fast-growing grass seed, and that's okay. what they currently have now. If you encounter a situation like that again, I would just um, look at getting a what they call jute netting, and yes. it's a biodegradable netting. It's got seeds in it. You, you, peg, it, yeah, you peg it in. And it helps to germinate really quick. Well, what we're doing now is we're going to wait till September and we're going to have it all reseeded again. Yeah. With the proper stuff that you normally a yard should always go in in the fall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't plant the grass in July. No, for no. For this reason, but we're going to, because I want it to be a nice, oh, thick, gosh. full lawn. This yeah. Is, um, yeah this is gosh, what a difference. <laughs> I remember walking now with the old bear. Cottage. Fair cottage and Fair remember that? Cottage? Yeah, that was oh the old my God. That was yeah. Yeah. Bears, no, I spent a lot cottage up on the there. hill. There was yeah, a little mole. Down. Remember how he had it literally three feet from the water? Right? <laughs> it was yeah. Crazy. Yeah, it was very, very close. Yes, I remember. It was falling up. Every year I go there and the walls were going this towards the water. And finally, there was like an inch gap. Now, this thing's going to fall down. Yeah. Are you related to the bears? No, I used to rent the cottage for John the Bear for years. And my husband said to him, you have to go to Selvis. And we get in a real falls. And one March he calls up, he said, it's owned by five siblings. Right, Joyce was my mother's best friend. And none of the family wanted it. Yes, I none of them, they all had Tom kids. They did. So he yeah. said, $250,000, we each want 50 grand. $250,000, that's 2002 we bought it. Yeah. So, and then we kept it. And you know what's beautiful about it is so, no one can be on your left. Yeah. The the mus the muskrats can be on the right. Beavers are on the right. <laughs> and then you've got just that gentleman right behind you. That's yeah. That's it. All the trees you made me put in that nice beautiful old lawn chair. Yes. I paint it up two feet with we take paint for the um, latex paint for sand. Latex paint with yeah. sand in it. Mm -hmm. And I painted every tree, everything I put yeah. in. I painted it. I have. Well, no, the boat ramps across. Across, but yeah, across the boat ramp. Yep, yep, yep. yep. The, and the south, <laughs> I used to be almost there in the south pond, but now they're they're, they're going. <laughs> There's another right. end. Yeah, yeah, this yeah, looks, yeah, I know exactly. This looks wonderful, Robin. Robin. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. This is my beast protection. <laughs> <laughs> Does it work? Ah. <sighs> Yeah, the geese, the geese oh, are know. really. And I'm to grow that them is them. so beautiful. Yeah, we, yeah. we have 40 of them. 40. I wake up in the morning there. Oh, I love yeah. the wall with the beds. Yeah. I love yeah. that. Now, so if I may ask, who did your walls? The same people did my driveway. That also okay. Did, my, did a all wonderful job. Yeah. They're out of playing field, you know, Connecticut. Because I've lived in Connecticut almost every day I've ever worked at my house. Yeah, that's great. Looks beautiful. Spectacular. Yeah. yeah. And nobody even sees this. This is on the swamp side. Right, right. <laughs> I've, I, oh, blueberries. I, I've got a uh, gallon and a half so far. Nice. You get, I put in over 20, this is 20 of them all together. Do the geese eat them? No. no. Oh, that's where the oh, nets are. Right. Mm -hmm. I had to extract a bird from underneath one of the nets the other day. He was having a good old time eating them. Yeah. 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 So that was before. Before you put in the And then she room. has the picture of the driveway. The after. Yeah, it looks great. So, commission oh, members. Yeah, that was only a block. Yeah. Not bad for that size driveway, you know, right? Right, but look how big it is, right? It's oh, yeah. huge. It's, it's, it's huge. It's, it's in the road. It goes yeah. right into the road. So. Well, the road is not even on. It's like. Black Point, yep. From or see, they call it Cedar Point Road, but it's actually it's only a 20-foot right-of-way. And my deeds allows me to cross 
everybody's deed rights and of course beyond the right to access. So we're lucky the town plows it. Keep it hush hush. It's a It's a recorded me. Okay, let's, okay, I vote we should um, give them the compliance thing. So, Mr. Right. Chairman, so in regards to the certificate of compliance, everything um, that was in the commission's order of conditions, everything had been, you know, they went above and beyond um, even the plantings that were requested. The plantings looked wonderful. Yes, some of them are on the smaller side, but they seem very healthy. Um, but even all the excess, the property is, you know, the grass had come in beautifully other than in that one area just because of the slope of it. And then the driveway was not complete per the original set of plans that were submitted. Everything else um, was all in compliance with the commission's order of conditions and um, if the commission is happy with the pictures um, that were just shown to you I think because there was so many sent and unfortunately both IT guys um, are out Greg was in for a portion of the morning Brandon was ill today so they probably have not seen that that got stuck or they would have forwarded it but we can work together just to at least get one picture of the driveway and one of the um, to make it go through. I'll let you know after IT looks at it, but I guarantee you because the file was so large with so many pitches, it, it got flagged as spam. Okay. Um, well, actually, if you, just a moment, okay. Uh, Robert, I was just curious, um, was there any change orders from the original? So typically we ask for an as-built you want you? several copies? I've got. Do we have those on file? Oh <laughs> God, you've got so many. Yeah, and I'm sure her file is huge. You um, want to do more? I have to pay $385 for oh. anything. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need a copy. Take a copy. I'll right. give it right back to you. Right? This was Burton. That's right. This was Burton. I remember yep. that. This is a nice little. I know. Yeah. Pictures. <laughs> we usually don't get them this fancy. <laughs> And Dawn has right. all that also. She has them. Mm -hmm. this That's on there? Dawn has that also. I'm just not getting these maps. <laughs> <laughs> this is a standard. Well, the, on occasion, I feel like telling people there's a new thing out called the Rulo. Oh, you know what I mean? Oh, no. get, like, first grade. I've seen, I, I was here one time when a guy had to do a hand-drawn thing at this property. Like, I don't know how to do that. I can't. So, that's That's the whole tech and all the What was mm -hmm. there, Rich, was a oh. very small red cottage, actually, right about here. Yeah. So, this is the okay. as built. This is how it. Okay. In other words, there was no change from the original no. plans. No. That's, that's really my, that was really my no, question. We, we, were, no. we worked with her for quite a few yeah. meetings on the plantings, <laughs> and we went, we went out there. I came in when I changed my um, plan schedule. Come on. The, I know. Really I was here. Really, no, it really looks yeah, nice. The only it thing really, I'm just really going to mention is I know that possibly at some point your retaining wall might need a little work. Just make yeah, sure you contact us. You talk about I, the water um, one? Yeah. Yeah. I keep putting a coat of that stuff on it that that keeps it from crumbling. But boy, Johnny Bear. Hey, but you should be. Yeah, the house was a mess. I mean, it was just a cottage for years yeah. and years. Oh, is it yeah, tilting so. forward? Um, um, see what constructive no, it's just, criticism it's, does it's by the from Conservation the 50s. Commission. Yeah, you get a more beautiful property. I always thought it looked pretty good. But, I mean, it's actually yeah. had, okay. for the age of it. it no, I'm just saying I don't know what your what's and the concern. Her, and I thought it been there the, for like the ever. Far end of the I know. Point, it's all natural, didn't go yeah, near that. that. Good. It still has all that. Oh, that was swamp stuff. So yeah. people can, when they're out there kayaking, it, they, yeah. they, they can't even see my house from when they're in the swamp area. Mm. Good. Yeah, it's really pretty. All right, anything else, folks? Rich, all set? Yeah. Uh, motion? I motion we uh, grant the certificate of compliance. But it's extraordinarily beautiful <laughs> due to the suggestions by the Webster Conservation Commission at 19 Cedar Point Road. All right, so we've got a first a motion to issue the COC for 19 Cedar Point Road from uh, first with Robin Jewell. Do we have a second? 
I'll second that. All right. Second from Commissioner Rich Parent and a roll call. Commissioner Jewell? Yes. Commissioner Sheeran? Yes. Commissioner Parent? Yes. Commissioner Wigglesworth is a yes. Yay. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. <laughs> Don't be surprised if we just stop over and have fun. Yeah, I, I'm now a Massachusetts resident. All right. Don't Thanks. yell at me while I'm fishing out in front of yeah. your house. <laughs> no, no problem with that. No, we, we, we haven't had any issues with anything. No. No, we no, like Great. Thank you so Thank much. You. Great seeing you. Enjoy you the summer. <laughs> Enjoy it. So I'll let you know. That house is amazing. Okay, folks. Good night. Joey. Thank you so much. Joey. All right. Two more things here. Um, draft meeting minutes, June 26, 2023. Has everyone had the chance to review them? And is there any discussion on them? Hearing no discussion, do we have a motion to approve the meeting minutes as written for June 26, 2023? I'll make a motion to approve the June 26 minutes as written. All right. Commissioner Parent with the first. Do we have a second? I second. Commissioner Jewell with the second and a roll call for June 26. Commissioner Jewell? Yes. Commissioner Sharon? Yes. Commissioner Parent? Yes. Commissioner Wigglesworth is a yes. July 10th meeting minutes are not uh, available, so can we get a motion to continue July 10th meeting minutes to, um, do we want to do the 7th? Yeah, why don't we do 8-7 on that, please? I make a motion to continue the meeting minutes from July 10th to August 7th. Okay. Commissioner Sheeran with the first. Do we have a second? I'll second. Commissioner Parent with the second and a roll call. Commissioner Jewell? Yes. Commissioner Sheeran? Yes. Commissioner Parent? Yes. Commissioner Wigglesworth is a yes. Um, meeting minutes for July 17th, 2023. Um, have we had a chance to review them? And if not... <laughs> You're the shortest minutes ever. Yeah, I know. No, I know. Um, so, and I think you and I are going to vote on it. I know. <laughs> um, no, folks can. That's you, true. You're yeah, right. You can vote on uh, the minutes uh, as long as you've reviewed them. So, um, July 17th meeting minutes. Um, any discussion? All right. Do we have a motion to approve those meeting minutes as written? I'll make a motion we approve July 17th. Meeting minutes as written. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Parent with the first. Do we have a second? I'll second. Commissioner Sharon with the second. And a roll call. Commissioner Jewell? Yes. 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 Commissioner Sh uh, Sharon? Yes. Commissioner Parent? Yes. Commissioner Wigglesworth is a yes. And our last item is for uh, staff report uh, on commission items. Okay, so I have one one item that I would like to discuss um, at the last meeting, Mr. Parent. Um, okay. All right, we just need to hold. Okay. We are in a hold. We can take a three minute break if you'd like. So. This is actually nice. Oh, we meant to give that back to her. Okay. It's actually a nice example. It is. This is a nice example to show for, for an as built. Well, not really, because it doesn't have a. They're not usually that nice. No, they usually just give you a plan and here you go. Well, but this is nice. It, it, it talks about it here. It gives you some photographs. Yes, that aspect is, but it's missing the the actual what was there before. The pre. The, yeah. There you go. 
we make a big deal on multiple occasions about what was there pre-existing versus. Well, Mr. Chairman, can I chime in on that? Yes. So on some of what I'm finding, um, Mr. Parent, is that on older NOIs, it's not specified in the order of conditions. Got it. Okay. So it's hard for me to enforce something because all of the newer ones, I now will give them a copy, a highlight. This is what we need. Yeah. So it's hard to enforce something that's that's not there. Not in the order of conditions. Okay. All right. Okay. Ahead, so staff report at the, well, not the last meeting, the July 10th meeting, Mr. Parent brought up that he would like a new um, agenda item added um, called new topics. So if a commission member wants to bring something up or discuss it, it can be done because it will be on the agenda. Um, I did not put it on this agenda because I think it's important to set some guidelines down. So, you know, even for the public where this is an open meeting, um, I think we need to, the commission needs to come up with what they think are some good guidelines. Just for an example, like if somebody wants to talk on something, you know, you start off with a five minute conversation and then maybe you know, the next time build up on it. Um, what topics can be discussed, which ones should not be discussed, et cetera. Um, so if it's okay, Mr. Chairman, I think at the next, um, the next Conservation Commission meeting, if all of the commissioners have kind of come up with some sort of guidelines that they think would be pertinent to making that you know, a great line item um, for some good discussions, but with guidelines, I think it, if we present it at I the next meeting. I would recommend emailing Dawn your topic, and then when Dawn and I have our weekly conversation, um, I will um, review what the topic is and hopefully put it on the agenda. Yeah, as long as it good. is. I think the idea is to be like scenario based, not case based. So we want we always have to be careful of that, right? So it'd be always be a scenario, and or um, something that the the commission would like to do as a group. Uh, yeah, you know, wh whatever that might happen to be, policies. Um, yeah, I mean, something that, you know, is educational for the public. It's right. educational for us. If we want to have someone from DEP come in and talk with us for half an hour, I can arrange those kinds of things. I mean, it's, it only makes us a stronger board, and we're going we're gonna to have three new people joining us. So they're going to be going through training, um, you know, fundamentals training, and then, of course, want to make sure that you know, the board is as cohesive as possible. So working love, cohesively idea, together. We have to do be careful because we're, uh, you know, open meeting law is, is a big thing right now. So yeah, but a little constructive criticism is, is great. If things aren't being done, it's nice to get a little guidance and stuff. But then there's a point. Well, you know, what's the point of criticizing? You know what I mean? Well, there's such a thing as criticism, and then there's such a thing as being belligerent to people. So, um, and I'll just keep my mouth shut on that one. Yeah, so I would just add that, you know, I remember when we were going out on site visits, there I learned an immense amount uh, just by asking questions out there, you know, that constant, and I feel like ever since we stopped doing that, that I've sort of uh, stopped my, my I agree with you learning. Point. So Saturdays became a complete 100% working day. However, if what in conjunction with what you're saying on site visits, 
if we had a choice, maybe once a month or every other month, we went with Joey. Joey's there, and then we went with him so that I, I could make my schedule or you guys do, but ha I totally agree with how it changed. I mean, it'd be a whole colony of people at somebody's visit, and then it, it did. Again, it gets the chit-chat, and that's a lot of people on someone's private property. But if we went back to the site vi visits where Joey or Dawn are always there, and then one of us took turns, because I know yeah. I can get it, every other month I can get an early Saturday off, but it yeah. came that I couldn't go to them because I was working. So, but, you know, so that's one of my, educational. that is one of my big, um, I mean, I'm not too the whole one about strengths. I, I mean, I'm really good with reading, reading plans. I'm really good with um, walking sites, getting, you know, pointing things out. When I, I mean, I, te I, I teach it for where I work. So, um, but we can, I mean, we can arrange something one-on-one. -on -one, um, I, I think you might be you missing know. what I was saying. So I was saying that I was learning a lot by by having the opportunity to ask questions out in the field. I don't have to be out in the field to ask the questions. What I'm suggesting is having an open forum to have discussions about, you know, perhaps scenarios that we see coming in front of the board so we can educate ourselves about things. Okay. Like, just a reminder of, I'll give you some examples. You know, w what about that jet ski lift? I mean, really, what is the impact of that thing? Because it's like different than, than the other docks. We didn't see, for example, constructions um, necessarily, uh, sometimes we saw materials that were being utilized and sometimes we didn't. Are, are, should we be concerned about things being pounded into the ground versus things that are set down? Should we be asking questions about like where are these things stored, like in the winter? Right? Is that part of our purview? Because I think there is certainly an impact when you take a dock out of the ground and you put yeah. it someplace. So, uh, so I guess what I'm getting to is like, is these are the questions we should probably be asking. And then I started thinking about as a board, perhaps we should have a set of things that we should be looking for. And uh, there are scenarios that come up every single time. If we had a checklist of things that we could even put on the web page and- uh -huh. That checklist has been brought up a lot. Actually I know. talked to Ann about it today. So people and, understand. In our meetings. I, yeah. I, see, I see exactly where you're going, but there, there was an avenue of which the I'll call it the previous board now, um, took way too strong of a stance. And you cannot be I, as, as stringent as you are when you're, per, when you're in permitting. I, there needs to be a balance of customer, customer service with regulation. And if we're skiing too far out of the regulation and being a governmental overreach, that's that's a problem, and that's agree. what the public had with with this board. Yeah, and we are we're now in a new phase of the board, and we're gonna definitely work on items that you're bringing up because I definitely see them as items that we do need to you know checklists and it makes it easy for everybody. It does, yes. and particularly the new people that are be coming in because we have absolutely. to be we know that they're gonna need an educational process. Yes, absolutely. And even for even for myself, I think a checklist would be, because I do have an alternate list of things I would like to get to that just the time has not allotted for down there, you know. Um, but that is one of the things because if applicants know X, Y, and Z, definitely has to be put on there. We saw a plan tonight that was you know had a, needed a lot of work that if we had an outline that they had seen previously, they, they probably would have come with a different this set of. This has been talked about before, though, and I think it would be great with Dawn. I think it, with her full time, and once we get some stuff, when you're not so inundated with. Yeah, and as, I I've, to be as I've said before, Robin, um, you know, the website is a priority, but unfortunately there was backlog that had to be done, and this sure the lake stays nice. You don't spend a yes. million dollars on a house that mm -hmm. two towns down would be 500 mm -hmm. unless you want this water mm -hmm. to stay nice. But if we had the website, it would be clear of mm -hmm. not only what, what someone needs, so it's not back and forth, and back, yeah. but they would understand why a little bit. Yeah. You know? So the one but thing... Again, yes, I spoke with people. 
Well, so there is. There's there's a lot that still needs to, you know, be done. I do think we're at an exciting time with the commission and conservation because the town did hire somebody 40 hours. But I can tell you, it's still not enough because I still, <laughs> even when I call applicants on Saturdays, they're like, you're closed. Okay. But, you know, and I'm trying to do the best I can. I don't think, you know, it's a choice I'm making to put in extra hours that you don't get compensated for, but I'm trying to do the best job I can, not only for the applicants, but to get the commission and the conservation okay. office where we all want to be. So just know, like, the, the website is a priority. It's just right and now, just it is good. nuts down there. I, I <laughs> Crazy. Have to, I, have to, I have to say this. It's, it's been great seeing you develop as a professional for this for this board it really thank has. you i'm trying i cannot hard. tell you guys enough if you go down there and spend an hour down there the amount <laughs> of the volume of applications um having to get out into the field and do observations yeah. um administrative approvals the volume that that department does for conservation in this community with its boom Insane. has been crazy. So with that said, if somebody has a list of, say, docs and, has a, and wants to try drafting a really quick list and send it to Dawn or pass, you know, pass it along to me, um, we can, you know, we can start doing, putting together small checklists like that. But I can't say it enough that mm -hmm. she she needs help. I mean, even with Tracy, <laughs> even with Tracy, I'm trying. <laughs> Tracy's Tracy's got three, four boards. It is it is bonkers down there. Um, and you know, I'm I'm hoping at some point to. I've asked for a full timer to be here, and we've got a full timer now. Yeah. Um, and, and we really have. Really, it's it. And I'm going to be honest with you, I see this across the state with my professional life. A lot of, even from one full-timer and even a dedicated clerk, it's sometimes not enough. There's so many busy, you so know, because we're in an economic boom. Even things, um, Richard, like if you have a scenario that you're thinking needs a checklist, you know, maybe draft it up and then we can present it and see, get input and... 